Good morning, everyone. It is the 13th of June. Uh, I was supposed to do this yesterday, but um, I just got down from the mountain, and so it kind of uh, took me a while. Now, when I say down from the mountain, I don't mean a spiritual mountain. <laughs> I mean the literal mountain. Um, <laughs> uh, so, uh, just the idea that I wanted to look at today is that no one is self-made. Sometimes we think that we're this, we're this island that we exist all by ourselves and that we don't need anybody else. You know, I got where I am because of me. I've powered through. Right? And I, I'm not trying to trying to um, downplay how important hard work and perseverance, and those, those are good things to have. But the idea that, that I am a self-made person, I got here all by myself, it's just not true. No one is self-made. Everything you are, you owe to someone else. Um, everything you are, you owe to someone else. Whether you realize it or not, everybody in your life has had an impact on you. People who came before you, people who are in your life right now, they've all had an impact on, on your life cumulatively. And so to have this idea that, you know, I, I'm the self-made person, I, I, have, I have become who I am by myself, it's just not true. I'll give you a couple examples. Uh, first off, um, if you had parents or lack of parents, that did something to mold you into who you are. Um, God's blessings, grace, and mercy throughout your life. Um, all the times that you could have died from a situation that you didn't. Um, all the times that um, you faced things that, that, you know, God's hand was in it, even if you don't realize it where God's hand was in it. Where He gave you grace when you didn't deserve it. Uh, when He gave you mercy. When he, when he gave you guidance and blessings and things. Like, uh, oh, well, this just, this just worked out where I got this job that I was really wanting. You know, things like that where it's like, we just take it for granted. Or we think that, um, you know, it's just because of how great we are that we were able to work out this, this thing for ourselves. And the truth is, every, every good thing comes from, comes from God. And um, another example would be friends. Uh, people who, um, not, I'm not saying yes men. People who will, who will just support you in whatever stupid thing you do. People who actually, um, well actually they have, a, they have an impact on your life too. Um, a weakening impact, but still an impact. Uh, I'm talking about people who will who will be real with you, people who will you know really genuinely care and check in on you, and when when it's not in their best interest that they're still there for you. Th those friends, um, uh, people who cut you a break and helped you out along the way. Um, this could be any number of people. For me, I remember one time it was a um, it was a police officer. Now. That's hard for some people to imagine, but it, but it's true, um, and, I, and I hope that. Um, okay, so let me just kind of uh, give you my example. Um, I was coming down um, from Cloudcroft one day, and I was speeding. And it was a very scary situation. Um, I was speeding to get out of um, the left lane. I I was passing somebody, and they decided for whatever reason to start speeding up with me, and so then the passing lane was coming to an end and there was a blind curve coming up and I couldn't see what was there and I started to freak out because I couldn't get back because it was matching my speed and then there was another car that <laughs> it's like they were trying to crash me off the mountain I swear so I sped up really fast to get over him and around him before you know just to make sure I, w I didn't die and um, there was a cop sitting right there on the corner just waiting for me and he pulls me over and the situation went from bad to worse. Um, I didn't have uh, proof of insurance in the car. I had insurance, but I didn't have proof of insurance in the car. And, you know, he kept asking, hey, do you have this? Ah, oh, that's a funny story. You know, I think I, somehow um, that I left my driver's license, if I remember correctly, I accidentally left it in my other pants or something like that. Oh, man, it was just like thing after thing after thing. And so he walks up and he says, you know, I, I, you have kids in the car. You, you really need to be more safe for them, and I was, and I was just thinking, yeah, I know, like it was very frightening, and so then he said, um, I'm not going to give you a ticket today, and uh, I'm just going to tell you you need to slow down, and that was it, you know, that had a huge impact on my life. First off, he he had me dead to rights. I mean, I I was doing the wrong thing. Granted, I was doing it to try and get out of a bad situation, but I was still doing the wrong thing, and he he showed me grace where I didn't deserve it. And it saved me my insurance going up, it saved me money, it saved me all kinds of stuff. It was in a time where really, we really didn't have any money in the bank either. So, you know, that, for him, 
it might not have been that big of a deal, but for me, it was a world-changing thing because there's a lot of people who take advantage um, of their position, of their authority, people who just look to get back at somebody, people who just, they're waiting for somebody to screw up. It's like they have kids and they, they see their kids and they, they're they just waiting for their kid to do something that, that they don't want them to do. And as soon as they do it, they jump on them and they ride them and they make them feel real stupid. And this cop, he had the chance to do that. And instead, he gave me mercy. And that's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. The people who have cut you, cut your break or helped you out along the way, that maybe you didn't even realize that they were doing that. Um, I was at a pet store and I was a little bit short on something. And I said, you know what, just take it. It's just a couple of pennies. And it was little things like that that it, it mattered to me. Um, another another uh, another example would be enemies. You might think, well, what could I possibly learn from an enemy? I was reading a book called God Emperor of Dune by Frank Herbert. It's a science fiction book. Don't feel ashamed if you haven't <laughs> heard it or if you never read it. Don't feel ashamed. I, I get it. I'm into some things that some people just aren't. Um, but in this book, one of the characters uh, is talking, and one of the things that he says is that enemies make you stronger. And I would have to agree with that. You know, no one is self-made. We're here because of other people, but not always because they intended. Sometimes people people come into our lives trying to tear us down, but they only build us up. And what we try to do is we try to get bitter at those people, but what it's a better thing to do is appreciate the impact that they've had on your life because they have taught you to get stronger. They have taught you to push on. They, they've maybe shown you some of your weak areas. Um... It's hard to look at someone who's hurt you emotionally and find the good from it, but not. sometimes people who hurt you, they'll have good things that you can learn from if you can see past your hurt and bitterness. So enemies. Um, another example, um, the actions of others around you, for instance. Um, th well, there's a lot of examples about that, but here, here's just some examples. Um, the rebels who founded America, you know, if they wouldn't have rebelled against the, the crown, we wouldn't be in America and things would be a lot different. Now, for better or for worse, that's where we are. Or how about the soldiers uh, who fought afterwards to make America what it is today? Um, I, I'm not a big fan of politicians, any politicians, but I have great respect and love for military and for those people who have given up a part of them. I mean, most of them that I know... It's not like a, it's not like a hobby. It's like a, a it's like a, a whole worldview that they have surrendered their their life and their future for the idea of of others, and um, that's really um, had an impact on us here. Or I mean, if you look back throughout history, the civil rights movement, uh, different key leaders like Martin Luther King uh, Jr. and uh, different people throughout history that have made us what we are today. We stand on the backs of those who came before us, whether we like it or not. Some of us had parents or grandparents that sacrificed everything for us, even to the point that it hurt them. And still they provided for us, and they, and they tried to make a way for us. None of us is self-made. So maybe you had a hard life, maybe you had people walk out on you, Maybe, but there's always been people who made you what you are, who built you up. And to say I am a self-made person is just not true for anybody. Maybe you had didn't have as good of influence in your life at an earlier stage that maybe some other people had. But then to say you're completely self-made just completely doesn't see the big picture. So learn to appreciate the input of others. When people have something to say, even if they're 100% wrong, just learn to appreciate the fact that, first off, they're taking the time to even talk to you. Uh, another thing is learn to appreciate the effect of others. For good or for bad, it's had an impact on you. And you can choose what to do with that, grow or shrink. And learn to appreciate the contribution of others in your life. Um, it's our responsibility to use what we have to bless others. Even if there are some who curse us. Some, what we do is, is somebody treats us wrong and so we say everybody out there is evil. So I'm going to just watch out for myself. And here's the thing. There's going to be people who disappoint you. Everybody's going to disappoint you. But that doesn't free you from the responsibility to use what you have to bless others. And I will say this also. Find better friends. Uh, dr there, there are some things that are great ways to unite people. Drugs are not a great uniter of people. If you have people who you do drugs with, don't count on them. Okay, maybe, maybe don't do drugs. <laughs> but um, with that being said, your druggy friends aren't going to be exactly the kind of people that are you're really going to go places with. They're not going to be a uniter of persons. You're not going to be like, oh man, they were always there for me. No, people always rat on each other. They always do. They always do. 
people think, oh, no, he'll never rat on me. Oh, okay, buddy. Um, drinking is not a great uniter. You know, oh, well, we get out and we get drunk together. So there's not really a unite, um, something that brings unity there. You're just getting drunk together. Um, there's a lot of hypocrites in the church, people say, but there's a lot of hypocrites everywhere. So I feel like, you know, that's not really a good point. There are genuine people. Find people with similar, similar life purposes as you. And if you don't have a good life purpose or the right life purpose, change your life purpose. Don't live your life for yourself. Live your life for God, for something bigger. And then find people who are other people who are doing that, because there are people who are doing that. And, and live for something better so that you can, you can build into someone else. God doesn't want you to serve your own best interests all the time. Be in it for others as others have been in it for you. And you might say, well, people haven't been in it for me. If no one else has been in it for you, Jesus has. He himself, who thought of you when he died on the cross, and remember, this is God who died for you. When we think of people who are in authority, we think of people who abuse their authority. We think of people who maybe mistreat people, who maybe we can't rely on, who we have to be fearful of. But God's not like that, and he showed us that with the cross. That God could have stayed in heaven and just condemned everybody and wiped everybody out and brought death and destruction. And, but instead, he died, he died on the cross for our sins. That's just completely the opposite of what we see. And Jesus even said that. He said, the world, this is how their leaders work. But in the church, don't, don't, don't work like they do. Um, so the main point here, no one is self-made. Appreciate those people who have built into you and build into others. Um, I hope that that was encouraging for you. I hope that it was reflective for you. It causes you to be more thankful, I, w I would hope. Um, it's definitely something that helps me to not be so prideful. Sometimes I think, man, I'm, I'm, only, I'm the only one who cares for me. I'm the only one who's helping me. I, you know, I'm the only one who... But then if you actually just stop and then think about it, it's just not true. Um, it's just um, we sometimes forget to be thankful for the things that are um, right in front of our faces. So I uh, have a great rest of the day. Um, Next week, I will be uh, doing one of these on Friday, um, not Saturday. And uh, so I hope to see you guys tomorrow for service. Uh, Pastor Andy is going to be talking about um, saved, uh, the, uh, defining, defining. well, he's talking about a lot of different things. I, I don't remember exactly what it's called, what the series is called, but he's been talking about um, um, the difference between being saved and being sober and just a lot of, a lot of good stuff that he's been talking about there. So I hope to see you guys in the morning. Um, if you can't, if you can't make it, um, you can watch it online. Also, in, in the evening, I'll be finishing up my series on, um, what is my series on? Uh, how we need each other. <laughs> wow, I tell you what, it's been quite the week. Um, so, okay, uh, you guys have a good rest of the day. See ya.